Hello, and it's Gary Vasey with Comtech Advisory. While metals markets are looking quite changeable these days, we're seeing an increase in international exchanges, bilateral trade agreements, an increase in regulations, of course, developments in mine financials, and of course, metals prices are falling, which is always a challenge. And I'm joined here today to discuss the metals markets by Premvir Jain, who's responsible for metal solutions at OpenLink. Premvir, hello. Hey. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of solutions OpenLink has for the metals markets, please? So OpenLink's been in the metal space for a long time, more than a decade. Uh, when we started off, we were offering solutions primarily to the central banks in terms of managing their precious metal inventories and to the investment banks that were participating in these markets and offering products to their customers and then hedging on the international exchanges. So what we've done over the last few years is extended our footprint in this area and moved into other participants in the market, so offering services to market participants such as producers and brokers. In doing this, we've extended our product functionality and also learned from these participants to ensure that we're offering the best of breed solution in the market. What we've done in addition to this is produced a catalog of standard content. What this allows our customers to do is to get using our system really quickly and really efficiently. So we've had clients who've gone live using our functionality within 16 weeks, and this is the quickest time to market that's around at the moment. Very good, 16 weeks is remarkably fast. Is there a particular approach that you've taken to, to make that happen? Yeah, it's, it's an approach of what we call standard content. Using our experience, we've put together a collection of best practice set up in terms of market data, contract types, logistics configuration. And we offer this as a single package to our customers, which they can take on and start using the system a lot more rapidly than they used to be able to. What I'd like uh, to do, though, is, is ask you to pick your brain a little bit. I mentioned some of the things that are going on in metals markets right now. Um, what are the business drivers? What are driving people to OpenLink looking for solutions right now? Um, some of the key drivers which we've seen are in line with the ones you mentioned. So, you know, there's, there's been a huge rise in international exchanges and international trading in metals, a lot more than in the energy markets. And this has been driven by regulation. Uh, a lot of countries are putting export bans on their local production. Some other countries are putting import bans, making markets more local. But there's also an introduction of new products in these markets and companies are struggling to keep up with all of this. And rather than using in-house systems, coming to companies such as ourselves where we're offering, offering market-leading products. And, and what are you able to offer them, for example, in terms of the increasing number of international exchanges as a business issue, perhaps? There's a number of areas affected by the rise of international exchanges. The first is the rise of non-dollar denominated trading. So a lot of these exchanges offer products which are traded in Indian rupees, Thai baht, Chinese renminbi. Uh, when you're trading these products, you need to not only manage the metal risk that's arising from it, but also the FX risk and manage the FX hedges associated with it. And as many of these currencies are not freely traded, you have to enter into more complex contracts such as non durable forwards to hedge these exposures. The, the second thing that's coming up is more complex contracts themselves. So, you know, no longer are you just talking about basic spots and forwards, but they're more complex derivatives. And OpenLink's metal solution can handle these very well. Very good. And of course, with prices falling, that always makes things interesting. Have you anything to say or to offer the market in regards to falling prices? It's quite an interesting point here because what we're seeing is a lot of interest from companies that don't actually just produce the metal, but they have to end up holding it as a part of their business activity. So these are typically companies that are taking metal and transforming it into day-to-day -day objects like beverage cans, or automobiles. And what we're seeing is the large amount of metal that they have on their factory floor in their warehouses and workshops is leading to large swings in their PNL as a result of movements in metal prices. This wasn't as big an issue in the past when metal prices were rising because it looks quite good on their balance sheets. But now with them falling, they want to manage these a lot more efficiently and hedge themselves better. But in order to do that, they need the right solution in place. 
with some of the banks um, under pressure to exit commodity markets and in particular to perhaps not take possession of the physical commodity, what kind of an impact do you think that's going to have on the market and, and how do you think that's going to impact the kinds of entities that are coming to OpenLink to procure solutions? What we're seeing is a number of new organizations getting created. Quite often these are pre-existing trading desks from banks that are just spinning out and creating their own companies. In other cases, it's market participants that are seeing an opportunity to extend their footprint and take control of a part of the business that was typically under the banks. These organizations need systems that can go in quickly and allow them to manage the complexities of physical contracts. As you know, concentrates and iron and metal ores are very complex products and managing the risk associated with them requires a system that has the capability to capture all of the relevant details of these contracts. And we offer the solution to these participants. Do you have separate uh, offerings for the base metals and the precious metals segments or, or is it the same, fundamentally the same offering? It is the same product but it will come with a different standard package. We'll have one package which is meant to accelerate a base metals client who's going into sort of the base metals trading space and another one to accelerate our precious metals clients who are entering the precious metals space. Well, I think that's all we've got time for with this edition. And uh, once again, I'm Gary Vasey from Comtech Advisory, and I've been talking with Prenvia Jain of OpenLink Financial. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary.